So the Carolina Panthers are the worst team in the NFL. They are winless on the season and clearly in a rebuilding situation with Bryce Young as their rookie quarterback. And um, not much sure, sure how much longer that Frank Reich is going to be the head coach there in Carolina. Uh, so this started last week when the report surfaced and Frank Reich talked about having to sit down and have weekly meetings with David Tepper, the owner. <laughs> And then it came out over the weekend that the Carolina Panthers were simplifying the offense for Bryce Young. And then they lose to the Dolphins big, even though they went up 14-0 early in that game. And now Frank Reich has given up play-calling duties to the offensive coordinator, Thomas Brown. I mean, we're, you know, six games into this whole thing, and it already feels like Frank Reich is on the hop seat and David Tepper. And Frank Reich can say, well, this was, you know, my decision, and, and you know, this was not a David Tepper telling me I had to do any of this stuff. But it feels like Frank Reich is scrambling for answers, and maybe, you know, he doesn't have exactly the right answer for David Tepper during these weekly meetings. And now we're taking drastic measures to try and get this thing back on track feels a little off there this is um this is one of those moves you make when you're a head coach who calls plays where it's one of your lifelines remember who wants to be a millionaire you got like three of the lifelines you gave the 50 50 you had the phone a friend what was the other one ask the crowd i think was the other one yeah you asked the crowd yeah this was this was like i'm not sure really this is probably more of like the uh, the 50 50 like you got to make a move and it has to be a substantial move. So you fire yourself as OC, and then you just have Thomas Brown, who's the titled OC, now call the plays. Because um, because here's the thing with the 50-50 is you don't have – you, you got to make a choice, right? Once you eliminate two of them, you got to make that next, next choice between a couple things. And that's all he really has left. He has to make a choice. And there's probably only two things left, and it was fire himself as OC – allow Thomas Brown to call the plays, which might buy them some more time and potentially it sparks the team and, and maybe he's got a little more offensive creativity. Or you would say, all right, what, what, what else is the issue? The defense hasn't been great. In fact, that's the thing I point to the most. Like if I'm David Tepper and I'm frustrated with where this team is at is the roster's not bad defensively. I mean, now they've suffered some injuries and that's played a role. But if you looked at Matt Rule's time there, they won, what, seven games? I mean, uh, in large part due to their ground game and their defense. And, and I really felt like coming in this season, you bring in Bryce Young and, and then you allow him to be protected by both those things and they can be competitive. And what you didn't see was the fact that they weren't going to be able to run the football effectively. And even defensively, they'd taken some major steps back. So the narrative can be, hey, we, we're in a rebuild mode. We have a rookie quarterback. We have a new head coach. But the truth of the matter is, I don't know that that cupboard was really left that bare. I mean, tell me, am I wrong? Was that not a decent defensive team last year? Did they not start running the football better? They're still decent this year. Their defense is still decent. Like, it, it's, it's more of their lack of offensive weapons, and I get that, but – I don't know, man. It, it it seems like, and especially with David Tepper, a, a newer owner who wants change, wants it fast, like you worry about him wanting to make this thing a one and done. Hmm. I, I just, you don't make things better by switching out, swapping out coaches all the time very quickly. Uh, I think you got to give – there There was always the idea that you got to give a coach at least three years – before you know if you're going to start moving away from that coach. I just think this whole microwave uh, response to getting results is not realistic. Like if, if Tepper thought that he was going to, oh, bring in a new coach, I bring in Bryce Young, we're going to be just like Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and we're going to win a Super Bowl. Like – it, you don't just – you don't buy – and I mean, not in football at least. I, I've never really seen a team, a franchise, buy a championship. Like you had to have a, at least a good coach and, and the right framework in play for you to spend that extra money that looks like you're buying a championship to bring in pieces that make it better. 
but you still have to have foundational pieces. If you don't have foundational pieces, I don't understand why an owner would not give a coach the opportunity to put that foundational, like they do have foundational pieces. They do have a decent defense. They did just draft a, a quarterback in with, with their top pick. You have, you've made some moves. You got to give it time to, to develop. I just don't understand why you don't give things time to develop. It, it, there's like a pattern of impatience. And, and well, we've, it's, you know, five years. He's on what, four coaches? He's been the owner there. It's like, what are we doing, dude? Like, give it some time. I don't get it. Five years, four. I mean, I, I guess I kind of just look at more the track record with Matt Rule. He gave him three years, and it, it didn't quite work out, which that kind of falls under the rule, LeVar, that you're looking for. Yeah, three rules. I mean, three years. Yeah, three I, years. I, I, th- I think part of what happens with owners, especially newer owners to the NFL, is once they go through that initial hiring process of finding the guy – I think they become more in tune of, hey, what's working, what doesn't. They're they're around those league circles more, talking to other owners at owners' meetings and getting a sense for what everyone else is doing too. And I almost think that the decision-making on whether or not they've got a guy is shortened because of that. Like, their patience doesn't grow. In fact, it lessens. Because the longer they're in the league, I think the faster they realize they either don't have what they need or don't have what what he's looking for. And I think there's that portion of it from an owner standpoint that starts to come into play. Like As soon as you realize this isn't the guy, you want to move on as fast as possible. And you're making so much money as an NFL owner, you don't mind having to pay those guys out. You don't. You move on to the next guy because you know that with with having success, hosting a playoff game, you can make all the revenue, all that money back. The new head coach breeds to more optimism, which leads to better ticket sales and corporate sponsors. And there's other things to sell. And so that's one of those deals where I almost wonder that because of his experience early on as an owner and the more he's been entrenched in the NFL, speaking of David Tepper, the Panthers owner, is if he hasn't grown more patient, excuse me, impatient, and saying, ah, the more I do this, the more I can tell either they, they got it or they don't. Like, to some degree, like, I, I feel like the more you grow older watching football, it becomes kind of simple to, like, look at a player and go, yeah, he's got it, he doesn't. Or there's something off there. Or he needs a little more development here. Right? Like, when you look at some, you go, yeah, that guy's got it. Right? Like, LeVar, I'm sure when you saw Abdul, Abdul Carter the first time, there's there an element of you just going, yeah, he's got it. He's got it. He can wear 11, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you weren't like, ah, I need to see a little more. You're like, no, 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 he's got it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just a matter of, you know, when he develops into it, right? I, I almost wonder if that's part of it. it is if, you know, like, I feel like as you get older, I, 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 th- I think I get a, a little more patient, but I also know how to identify quicker like conflicts, issues, things where I'm like, ah, this isn't working. Got to move on. Which right? creates less patience, right? Because well, you know, e- either you less know. patience or it sharpens your decision-making process. And so, you know, you kind of look at the runway of, of a head coach and go, well, yeah, like, you know, I, maybe I didn't give you three years, but I don't feel like I needed to identify that you're not the guy. And this is my team so I can make that decision. You know, there's always the the chance that some someone else has caught caught his eye as well. Yeah, he could be interested in someone else, and he's not. You know, buddies, Reich is not going to get a fair opportunity outside of just really winning. Oh, are are you saying what are you like speculating, Jim Harbaugh to the Panthers? I'm not speculating anything. Whoa. I'm just saying Don't there's always. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, what you bringing up, Harbaugh, that's kind of interesting because there's been a lot of conversation about why he shouldn't be the highest paid coach in college football. And that has circulated around lately for some reason. So that would be interesting if if Tepper is, is eyeing up a Harbaugh. But I would say when you have an owner – that is is allowing things to come out of his organization and become public domain and knowledge of what's taking place. And then the, the head coach is even a part of those conversations and and what he's saying about the owner. It, it could be the, the idea that that 
coach knows he's not in a winning position anymore. He's yeah. a, he's a lame duck. I mean, and that could be the fact that the the owner has grown fond of someone else to to be his his predecessor.